Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. Uh, I'm riffing on some notes from an old friend's yoga studio, Yogascape in Carmel, New York. Thank you, Amy, for bringing me there for so many years. The first thing I learned is beginner's mind is not the same as the hierarchy. To continue to come back to that freshness where you're open to everything and ready for anything versus climbing the I hierarchy idea and ascending, getting higher and higher to the, to the dream, or I should say the slave to the dream of becoming a master. Realization simply means experience. And your experience happens on an ongoing basis. And as the German Zen master says, when you've been on the journey so long that the goal seems further and further away, then you know that the journey is everything, the goal is nothing. So being with you, even virtually, is so meaningful to me. Satsanga Swagavasa, being with people on the path is like a little bit of heaven. So I hope this touches you as much as it does me. And if you have a teacher, whether they're an educator, an instructor, a healer, a guide, a way shower, a shaman, a guru, a pathfinder, a coach, a trainer, I hope that they bless you in such a way that you'll stay the course and keep with this for your whole life. Now, although at the beginning of the path, especially in the kind of yoga practice I had, in Iyengar yoga where technical intricacies are really important, where you see the pose demonstrated, explained, and then sequentially given to you and then corrected, your nervous system feels something at the end and then you know, wow, this is really good. Even if at first there seems to be rigid adherence to the technique, you learn the principles as building blocks and then the freedom comes less later after you master the rules. Like when you see a dancer on stage, they seem so fluid, but that apparent spontaneity and creativity came from many, many hours, maybe even years, maybe decades of practicing basics till you get it down to the point of repletion and then you don't think about it anymore. And then you're kind of like in no mind. It's kind of flowing through you. So always I remind everybody, death is the great initiator. Death is the great advisor on your left shoulder, never bullshits you. And there's two things you can look at. You can see the eternal charnel ground somewhere Somebody is dying or being buried or on the way out, and that gives you one view of reality. And then you turn to the other shoulder, and there are the better angels dancing 24-7 around the throne going, hallelujah, hallelujah. So do you have what it takes to face this? Because since spirit to me is ultimately abstract, universal, and invisible, no form is a deviation of the spirit when properly accessed. So in modern times, initiation is much more internal, less external. Not that there aren't experiences that happen to you outside of yourself, in the world, so to speak. But I like to think of initiation as ruptures of the status quo, things that break through and take you down a notch and make you realize your ontological status is never going to be the same. And then you have to deal with the new level of reality. Of course, nobody wants that. Nobody expects it, but it happens all the time. And if you could reframe the things that happened in your life, you'd see how many times you've been initiated, and hopefully you've been able to turn it around so you can start to revision your life in something much more, much, much more luxuriant than the way we normally think of ritual initiation. So if you do that, what you're going to find is that the four forms of yoga, which are really only one form, Raja Yoga, which encompasses them all, is the personal form of contemplation. You have to foster a new vision quest for yourself that makes you a contemporary mystic, not comparing to how it was in the past or even projecting into the future, but realizing what your historical moment is and create something from that. You do that, of course, by being a karma yogi, selfless service, and applying goodwill and implementing in everything you do for the greater good. You find a new way to be a yana yogi, to integrate all forms of knowledge that have been bequeathed to us for the past, from the past and all the things that are unfolding right now also use the knowledge for the greater good. And then, of course, you're a bhakti yogi 
You go hog wild for ecology, and by that I mean the interconnectedness of everything, the preciousness of everything, because whenever what you love gets threatened, it really gets you upset. And so I hope you all feel the heart of the great god or the great goddess, or whatever name or no name you use, because all created forms are energies of the divine. I hope you find your own and revel in it.